Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix, and of course, welcome to a hopefully fairly quick video in which we are simply going to try and build a ground vehicle. I have never built one of these before, and I'm really curious to see just how difficult or how easy it actually is. So here we are on the ground-based vehicle designer because we are starting the ground-based campaign very, very soon. So, we have a slab of metal, we have our AI mainframe, and we have the AI card slot. So, naturally, the next thing we're going to need is the land AI, which is very, very similar to the naval AI. In fact, it even says it is the naval AI at the top, but it has some things a little bit different. So... I will just leave all of that the same for now, this all seems completely reasonable, except for I will be disabling reverse, and now we go into our movement. I'm not even sure where the ground movement is found, to be perfectly honest. Um, I guess it wouldn't be in air, would it be in blocks, or would it be in control? Okay, so here we are in the air section. We have wheels turning and wheels power. So the wheels turning will provide turning force and the wheels power will provide driving force. So in the front we have two turning sections and at the back we now have two power sections. So that in theory should work out at least how I think it should. So we have these and these, they even have thruster controls, although the turning sections we can't edit at all. But you, we can. Okay then, so right now then we need some power, so let's go down the lazy route and add a couple of RTGs, or at least a single RTG, and then just add a couple of batteries. So this is going to be a battery powered car, of course. Where are we? Resources, and then electric engine. So now we have power, we have that. Take Turn this to combat. Uh, summon an, an enemy just to set us off. And we are sunk in. There we go. I must have had it locked. Okay, that was pretty simple. Of course, the enemy's going to bomb us soon. Well, there's the bombs. Hopefully we'll dodge them. We're going towards it. So... That's not too difficult, actually. That's fairly nice. I was expecting it to be worse. Also, my frame rate's gone really, really weird. A few moments later, and now we have this, which looks a little bit like a mole car, to be perfectly honest, but there we are. It's an armoured transport, let's say that. It still only has 240 engine power, but now it has 9 power wheels per side. The reason being, I just want to test out, will they work when they're interlinked like this, and how power efficient are they? So let's spawn in an enemy yet again. And off we go, and not slow at all, but by the looks of things, a little bit too much turning and not enough weighing down. We did almost fall over there, so it's not exactly a stable craft. Also, the turning isn't quite enough. Although we are pretty much going after the enemy as expected. That's not too bad. That's not the most complex thing ever, and I'm really happy about that. So... Land vehicles seem fairly easy, at least so far. The one thing is, though, this is a very compact vehicle, so how am I even going to do weaponry on this? And I will just stress, I am not bringing this into the campaign. When we start the campaign, we will be building from scratch, and we will try to build better, because as you can see, we still have problems with this. Okay, there we are. Now it's working just fine. It's doing exactly what the AI should be telling it to by broadsiding the enemy at around about 500 meters away. So all I've done is I've made sure the center of mass is still very much in the center of the vehicle, but the weight of the vehicle is far more split. Therefore, when it tries to turn around, it doesn't start toppling over. So it's all nice and concealed, except for the engine. So let's put a very basic weapon on the top. And then I think we have our first ever fully working ground vehicle. And that was not difficult. Not difficult in the slightest. The only problem I have found is that by trying to put the mirror turning wheels, the turning wheels, which apparently are called mirror when they're on the other side, so that's something interesting to note, on the back, they don't really work. So back controls don't work very well, so I'm not sure if we could make a 4x4 or a back steering wheel controlled vehicle, though this seems to be working just fine, so I will just continue along with this until I find some way to fix that. 
Probably one of the worst turrets I've ever made. It is a 120mm gauge cannon. It will be firing flak shells, which have timed fuses, thus making it an anti-aircraft tank. The total build time, according to my little stopwatch, is around about 7 minutes. So... Yeah, I don't expect this to do too well, and here we are with the material cost and all of the other stats, with almost half of the material cost coming from the simple fact we are using an electric engine, which is very, very expensive. I'm just hoping that now we have this turret, it isn't too centralised, and we don't start tipping over. So, for our very first test, let's spawn in a shrike and see how we do. Technically speaking, we are anti-air. Oh, but that was spawned right on top of us. That was fairly bad. Okay, first shell. Close, but no hit. Second shell, and again, missing. You can do it, tiny little seven-minute build tank. I believe in you. Oh, do not... Why are you going backwards? Wow, that's actually quite a good shot. In terms of damage, the shells actually aren't too bad. So, that, so if I hit, I should be okay. Consider this an easy class vehicle versus another easy class vehicle. Okay, I've done some damage to the wings, and as long as we don't stay in the minefield for too long, we should be okay. I wish the fire out was better. But the entire turret is on the top section. There is no internal turret here. Everything is within the turret cap. So, as you can imagine, it's absolutely tiny. Oh dear. Oh! Thank you, Warheads, for not detonating yet. They do have a delay to make sure that they don't hurt the Shrike itself, and that just saved us. I don't know why, but I'm getting really into this fight. You can do it! I kind of believe in you! We are winning, technically, but if we go through one of these minefields, it's just over. As soon as they're active. Oh, no. Don't be active, don't be active, don't be active. Okay, that one's active, that one's active, it's following us. But not quite reaching us. Come on! We're okay. We are okay. And another hit! That was terrible. The funny thing is, I keep saying it, but it is completely true. If we do get hit by these, it will explode my ammunition barrels. There's almost no doubting that. Stop being stupid. Thankfully, though, the magnets are far less effective on land, it seems, than in water. So we do have the advantage there. Maybe I should have had multi-barrels and made them smaller shells. But then the explosion radius would have been, been smaller as well, so don't think that would have worked either. If we just make the body a little bit deeper and then have the turret on the inside, this would actually make a fairly decent, very basic tank. And then change the RTGs and the electric engine for the regular fuel engine for making it a little bit cheaper. Oh dear. Okay, okay, we just got hit. We just got hit several times. We are repairing though, because I'm inside, plus I do have repair bots. That survived a little bit better than I expected. Oh, and there it goes! The Shrike just crash-landed! I've just changed it to have three barrels, so now it's smaller shells, but fired more frequently, and apparently that is a little bit more effective. Not by much, though. That was really a quite pitiful fight. But the damage is okay, actually. A few shots can break wood. 
Would this break a metal opponent? No. But for my very first tiny build where I was trying to stay small, I'm fairly happy with that. So, with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. I'm going to go off and build a much larger tank and try to learn a few more things to do with the land AI to try and make a much better tank. This was just a test to make sure I knew how the wheels worked and to make sure I knew how the centre of mass would affect things. So, once again, thank you so much for watching. I actually quite like how this tank looks and I may, and I may end up using it as target practice in the future. Thank you for watching and goodbye. And one last thought, one last thought. Armour-piercing rounds probably would have worked better than flak. So thank you again and goodbye.